Hello TV family, welcome back to Ted and Vero TV. My name is Ted and this is my wonderful wife. Hi, I'm Veronica. Hello. So today I want to ask you a question. Are you a white man interested in a black woman? But are you a white man too afraid to approach said black woman? Stay tuned. So if this is you, we want to offer some advice today. As mm -hmm. you can see, I was in your shoes and I was interested in a black woman and this is where we are today. We're married two years and about four months. Yes. Mm -hmm. So perhaps we have a few tips and tricks and our advice is worth something because yeah. the proof is in the pudding, as they yeah, say. It is. <laughs> so some suggestions to maybe untangle this mystery as to why you might be too afraid, too inhibited to approach that lovely black woman that you've had your eye on. So one of the reasons why you might be feeling this way are simply racial tensions in society. Mm -hmm. If you turn on the news these days, it seems like every other story has something to do with race. But I want to encourage you not to let that psych you out. Yeah. Not to let something get into your head where you're thinking, well, black women might really resent the fact that I'm coming up to them because it just seems like there's so much tension between the races right now. So even though we're seeing a lot in the media right now about racial tensions, that doesn't depict every single person's point of view or circumstance. There are plenty of black women out there who have their eye on you, white man, and they're thinking possibly the same things you're thinking that are tripping them up for not being more open and receptive or willing to approach you with the possibility of, hey, let's get a cup of coffee. Let's get things started. Let's see if there are sparks here. So try to put that out of your mind. Honestly, whatever is going on in the world, on the news, you can go forward and you can make a difference in your own life and still chase what you want. Yeah, we are all one and we've come so far as a nation, the United States has come very far and I, for one, I'm so grateful for that. A lot has changed. Um, I know we've mentioned this in our previous video coming from the time of Mr. and Mrs. Lovin. You know, all that has changed. There is an opportunity out there. When it comes to the media, anything that is happening currently in the world has not stopped us. You just have to find a person that has a, a good character, someone you can connect with, someone that has love for you. You know, someone that you're on the same vibration and for us, Christian, someone, if the person is a believer, it's, a, it's even a plus, someone that is a believer, someone that you can serve God with, you know, so open up your heart and don't let everything that has happened in the past or what is currently happening in our society prevent you from loving the person that God has for you to love. Well said. And mentioning Mr. and Mrs. Loving actually was a great example because even if there are going to be challenges along the way, it's worth fighting for. Yeah. What you want is worth fighting for mm -hmm. and who you love is worth fighting for. So don't let it stop you. And something else that might be tripping you up is maybe you're thinking, I don't know enough about her culture. I'm going to be in way too deep. It's already nerve wracking thinking about approaching her in the first place. And I just don't know necessarily yeah. where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. She comes from a different background. She comes from a different world potentially, mm -hmm. as my wife is originally from Ghana and I've always lived in the United States. And it can be kind of intimidating to think, how is that gonna work? Are we even gonna be able to like connect and relate yeah. in the way that matters most? But cultural differences and our upbringing, those things definitely can pose certain challenges along the way and certain blocks of communication here and there. But those things aren't the root of what makes us who we are. We're all still human at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and re we respond to one another on that human level. Yeah. So don't overthink this. You'll get through that part, assuming you're good for each other in the first place, and you'll actually be strengthened and enriched because of your cultural differences. Mm -hmm. Being human is what connects us all and it's yeah. such a beautiful thing. Coming from Ghana, growing up in Ghana, I never imagined that I would be living here in Oregon with a man born and raised in the United States, you know, uh, a white man, as a matter of fact, you know, I never imagined, but that is the power of connection. That is the power of the human spirit. You know, you are somewhere, meanwhile, your spouse is in a different country, you know, and it, it's beautiful to see that. And so 
just always keep yourself open keep your heart open don't block what is yours and don't let anyone else block what could potentially be something great for you and reason number three why you might be a little bit intimidated to approach that black woman that you have your eyes on is because nobody else in your family has ever dated mm -hmm. outside their race yeah and this can be a big one because family and sort of the standards mm -hmm. that they have set up and the things that they have led by example to teach you are very, very strongly rooted in you, whether you realize it or not, whether you've gone with that grain or you've tried to rebel against it, your family has a huge impact on how you see the world. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking about breaking the mold or breaking tradition, so to speak, that might be kind of nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. But again, what most of these things are kind of coming down to the common ground that they have is that you don't want to live your life for anyone else. Mm -hmm. You don't want to live your life for any abstract idea about mm -hmm. how life should be lived. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in pursuing this person, then go for it. Yeah. And hopefully your family will understand. Mm -hmm. I would say in most cases, your family is going to understand. We were blessed. Nobody in my family made me feel anything other than full support mm -hmm. when I entered into this relationship. And as far as I know, it was the same thing on Veronica's side of yeah. the family. Mm -hmm. So regardless, even if they do have something negative to say about it, mm -hmm. or they say that's not how things are done in this family, or whatever your situation is, again, just be brave, be self-confident, um, go forward and get what you want that's where your destiny is mm -hmm. and don't let that stop you we understand that not every family was like ours and very accepting of us mm -hmm. you know and so there might be challenges that come along the way but like my husband said be brave you know take forward your future is what is more important yeah you don't want to live a life of regret saying yeah. that oh i was with this woman i love this woman and i let her go because of her family and i truly believe that even if your decisions might depart from what your family would want you can do it in a respectful manner yeah and if they're still not okay with it if they still want to put up walls and if they still want to even excommunicate in some of the most severe examples then that's actually on them as long as you are holding the banner of peace yeah. while saying this is what i want this mm -hmm. is who i love and this is who i am yeah everything will work out and the next one is closely related and that is maybe you're afraid of ridicule or criticism mm -hmm. because of the fact that again you're interested in somebody outside your race and it's still to this day strangely kind of a taboo thing yeah the ridicule and the criticism to be honest with you you're probably going to experience some of that every mm -hmm. now and again mm -hmm. in your interracial relationship from some place or other yeah. whether it's family whether it's on social media whether it's from a perfect stranger who gives you a look when you're out to dinner or whatever it is you will probably experience these things but to be honest they're probably going to be extremely minor yeah and again it's worth going through a little bit of discomfort to enjoy the person that you're meant to be with yeah exactly and one thing i've noticed is that when it comes to a lot of um caucasian men and correct me if i'm wrong there is a lot of um miscommunication when it comes to black women especially um a lot of times they've been told that white, white, um, black women are aggressive black women are yeah. you know too straightforward you yeah. know black women all these things that are far from the truth you know i think that everyone has their individual characteristics and their individual character and one person behavior does not determine or depict a whole race you know what mm -hmm. i mean and so that has been an issue in the co in, in in the caucasian community when it comes to us and for instance one of my caucasian friends used to tell me that veronica wow you are really different and i corrected her and i said what do you mean by that i i I was curious, like, oh wow, you are so calm. You are the first black person I've met. I was like, whoa, hold that thought. Don't, don't go there. First of all, you are completely wrong. You can't place an experience that you had with one person on a whole race of people. Classic and, stereotyping. You know, yeah, and I, I corrected her and then she she said, you know what, you were right. And then, you know, that made, that made me feel good because, but then it opened my eyes and I'm like, wow, is that how they really feel? Is that how I love? And it wasn't just her, it was other encounters that I had with other 
you know, Caucasian people. And I was like, whoa, if that's how they really feel, then someone needs to actually educate, you know? Yeah. And I understand that not all Caucasian people feel that way because Ted never felt that way, you know? And like I was saying, you cannot use one person, one experience you had with one person to generalize or categorize a whole race of people. Right. First of all, that is wrong. That is lack of education. And it, it, it is truly, truly disrespectful. So get to know someone for yourself. Give someone a chance to get to know you. Open yourself up for love. Mm -hmm. And don't block what could potentially be a blessing. Yes. They are beautiful, intelligent, strong, yes. courageous yes. black women out there that will support your dreams, that will love you unconditionally. And I believe it's the same with other races as well. For sure. And the last thought that I have for you is that maybe you're thinking, well, maybe she's not into white guys. But this is kind of a silly fear too, because no matter who you're interested in, you might be a white guy interested in a white girl and maybe she's not into you. Maybe she's really not. But you're never going to know unless you step out in mm -hmm. faith, take that chance. Hey, if you get rejected, brush it off. It's not like your entire existence is defined by her in the first place, whether yeah. she says yes or no. So all in all, the one of the core bedrock tips that I want to give you white men thinking about approaching a black woman is there's no reason for you to feel inhibited or intimidated or fearful or nervous or any of these things because honestly you're already coming from the wrong standpoint you're coming from a place that is already going to defeat you the number one thing that women are attracted to whether she's black whether she's white whether she's any other race is your confidence and you being your authentic self yes if you go up to her and you say basically this is the spiritual feeling these aren't necessarily the words you use, but the vibe that you give off is, hey, I'm on this journey in life. Here's my goals. Here's my map that I see myself going. And whether you want to come with me or not isn't going to make or break me. I'm going to go for it. I just want you and you alone to come along with me. Mm -hmm. Believe me, if that's how you're approaching her nine times out of 10, maybe even more, She's going to be really shocked and pleasantly surprised and incredibly attracted to you no matter what you look like, no matter what color your skin is, because you're exhibiting strength, you're exhibiting your manhood, and you're exhibiting that confidence that so many women are looking for in men and sadly is so hard to find. And women love men that are loving, they are kind, they are generous. Women want to feel nurture they want to be taken care of yep. you know and so if you're a man and you give a woman that yep. then it will be vice versa so be your authentic self like ted said go out there and find the one that is for you don't wait too long make the move let it happen at the end of the day be a human be kind be loving be generous just be nurturing and take care of that woman that you have been given God bless you all and thank you so much for joining us again on another episode of Ted and Vero TV. Um, don't forget to like and to subscribe. And if you have any comment, any suggestions, any advice even for us, please leave in the comment below. Have a wonderful day, everybody. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.